I'd like to invite you to just for just a moment, just take a deep breath. You may want to close your eyes or perhaps just unfocus your gaze a bit, relax your gaze. I want you to think specifically about the people in your life who you go to for support. The people you go to for guidance. Perhaps people that you just want to spend time with, to relax with, that you can fully be yourself with. You might even have some people that you enjoy getting together with because they challenge you. To help you think differently. Think of all those people in your life. There may be many, there may be few. This group of people are the people who comprise your circle of influencers. And at the moment, they are who they are. They're the people that you have turned to. They're the people that have offered their skills, services, expertise to you. They are individuals with whom you've become the person you are, that you've been able to grow and learn. And that's what we're going to talk about today is how to take that particular circle of influencer so it works for you, that you're really receiving and also providing the maximum benefit for your circle. My name is Valerie Hope. And I'm a, I'm a leadership coach and a professional speaker. And this topic of circle of influencers is one that's very near and dear to me. When, when I was very young, my mom told me that I was crying in my crib or my playpen. I could, I could barely walk at this age. I know I could, but she said I was crying inconsolably. Apparently, everyone was either too busy or they were not interested enough to come and find out why I was crying. In any case, she tells me that I crawled out of my crib or playpen or whatever it was. I went to the kitchen, opened the fridge, got my bottle and crawled back in my crib. And she knew from that point on, she's like, okay, this girl's to be a really independent one. And it's true. I actually was very successful in my life being assertive and self-sufficient and being able to do everything on my own. I've received a lot of praise because of it. I've received a lot of wonderful opportunities because of it. I've been given a lot of responsibilities as well. And I would dare say that in our society, we have really prized and have acknowledged the importance or even the admiration for that you know, do-it-yourselfer spirit, right? That pull yourself up by your bootstrap spirit. And which is wonderful and it has served such wonderful purposes and in my life it really benefited me in so many ways and i also started to notice the older i got the bigger the projects i wanted to take on the bigger the opportunities that i had in front of me the more difficult the more overwhelming <laughs> it became to do it myself to go above and beyond on my own became very challenging. And so I really want to take this opportunity today to talk to you about creating a circle of influencers that can help you tackle some of those big projects, those big goals, those big ideas that you have. Especially those that you know that you've hit your, your ceiling, you've hit your limit on your own, and you really wanna blow the roof off. And this particular group of people will be the people that you can get together with to help you do that. Now, the Harvard Business Journal had an article many years ago where they talked about having a personal board of directors. That was their term for it. Essentially, that mentorship, their assertion was that the mentorship experience that most seek, especially in the workplace, or perhaps if you're an entrepreneur trying to find your way through, the idea of having this one person who is to guide, support, that's accompanying you, that will challenge you in all in one individual it's actually quite a big ask and not necessarily the most effective use of your network so they propose to actually build a 
circle of influencers, my term, right? A personal board of directors. We have a group of people that you can go to for all of the different things and, the, and depending on the challenges and the needs that you have, you have someone to, to connect with. So I'm gonna help you build your personal circle of influencers today, okay? Now you might wanna take a piece of paper to write some things down because this is gonna be important. I'm sure you're gonna make sure that you take action and all the things that we talk about and I don't want you to miss anything. There are four different types of people or members, I call them, in your circle of influencers that you wanna make sure you have, okay? So the four are, you have the legacy members, you have what I call the supporters, you also have the companion, and then you have what I call the karmic members. Now let's break each of these down so that you know exactly what I mean by each of these terms. First one, legacy. So when we talk, think about legacy, we think about the future. We think something that we wanna leave behind for others, right? Somebody planted a seed at one point knowing that it would provide shade for someone else, yes? that the tree would grow and provide shade. So the legacy members are the people in your life that have a similar vision. Perhaps they're in the similar industry, perhaps they're members of your team working on the same project, but they're individuals who have a vision for accomplishing something. Now they may have a different responsibility in the project, perhaps their vision is gonna have them execute the project and, and, or, the, or the business or the product or service in a different way, but the essence is the same. I'll give you an example. I have one of my coaching clients who wanted to work on creating her own nonprofit organization. Now, because she, she's been working for one, but she hadn't actually created one herself, the best thing she could do was actually go to other people who run nonprofits to find out what paperwork did you fill out? How did you go about it? How do you create the kind of staffing model that you have? And all of these people that she connected with were able to draw for her, here's the path to go through. Or we're both working towards the same end, perhaps we can pool our resources together. It was fantastic, it made things so much easier for her. And plus, because she was doing some things on her own, it helped her instantly partner with someone with whom she could commiserate in some cases because there were, some, there were things that only they understood because they were going down the same path. So that's what someone in your legacy camp would do for you. They have a similar vision and they will help you get there because they're also on the same path. Now you might also find that they may be on complementary paths. Perhaps they're not exactly doing the same thing. For example, it could be someone that if you're interested in furthering education, for example, perhaps you have someone that's a legacy member working with high school students. You might have somebody working with college students, but both of you are furthering education. So similar vision, perhaps the paths are completely different, okay? Definitely important people to have in your circle because they do provide a sense of fuel and charge for where you're going. And you can perhaps collaborate with them on some projects, okay? That's the first one. The second group that you wanna include in your circle of influencers is who I like to call the supporters. Now the supporters actually comprise of some subgroups, but in essence, the supporters are people with whom you know you can get the right contacts, You're the, they're the people who know where to go, what to do, who to go to, what projects or what events or what activities you should take on, okay? They're the been there, done that group. Now the subgroups are what I like to call the Jedi master, if you will, for those Star Wars fans. They're essentially the people who have experience and they've gained so much wisdom and they're willing to share it. So they're the ones that will help you avoid the pitfalls. I personally have several of those in my life. When I started my own career as a professional speaker, I actually connected with a couple from my church who were professional speakers in their past, and they're now retired. And so spending time with them, learning, here are the organizations I should join. Here's where you could save money. Here's where you could make money. They really helped carve out for me the path that I could take. So they were, they'd been there, they'd done that, and they knew exactly what to tell me to do or to avoid. Incredibly helpful. There's another subgroup within the supporters, and that's the connectors. We all know someone who seems to know everyone. You know that person that you can say, hey, do you know so-and-so's email address? Hey, do you know so-and-so's phone number? 
right? That's the person that you want to make sure that you connect with as well. They're the connectors. They know people. They can introduce you to someone. So perhaps they're not even in your industry. They may not know anything about what you're doing, but if you say, hey, I'm looking for an event that I can go to that will help me accomplish X, Y, Z, Oh, I saw something online the other day. Oh, I heard so-and-so talk about this. And they'll make that connection for you. Super important group, super important person or subgroup of people to connect with. And then the final one is what I like to call the mirror holders. Now, within your supporter umbrella, this is the person or the people who are always there to remind you of what you're capable of, of where you've succeeded in the past. You know, anyone knows that when we're taking, tackling a new project or a new program or you're moving some forward in something that we really care about, there are going to be times when we have no idea what to do or we're doubting ourselves and we feel really insecure about what we're doing or accomplishing. We all need somebody in our lives that will tell us, hey, remember where you were a year ago compared to where you are now? Remember what you studied and how that applied, right? They're the people who help hold that mirror up to you so that you're able to see yourself in a more objective light. as a positive one. We need people like that in our circle. Okay, those are the supporters. Let's go to the third one. So the third group is like, I, what I, I like to call the companion. And what I mean by companion is, this is perhaps, these are individuals who have maybe nothing to do with what you're working on, but they're the people that you can feel the most connected to because you're the most authentic with them. You're not having to talk about work. You're not having to talk about family. You're not, perhaps nothing. You really just like spending time with them. They make you laugh. They're great people to you know, have the good shoulder to cry on. They're the individuals with whom you can vent. Okay? There's no skin in the game for them other than having you feel like you have a shoulder to cry on, you have someone to commiserate with, you have somebody to share your, your celebration with as well. My best friend Lily is the perfect example for this. Now, most of my life I've been devoted to my education and my career, and in how we met was in college doing the same thing. Now, she was focused on her family and also her home. And that's in her community. That's been her main focus throughout her life. So we have absolutely nothing to do with each other when it comes to those fields. And yet, whenever we're together, we can laugh, we can cry, we share some of the most immensely private and personal things, and we support each other unconditionally. That's the key word for the companions. You want people with whom you're absolutely unconditional. There's no tit for tat. It's simply just being. Really important. Final group, final group I call the karmic members of your circle of influencers. Now, here's the thing. Once you've identified your vision, right, you have the legacy members to help you move forward in your vision. You have the supporters that are going to help you find the nuts and bolts and fine tune the things that you need in order to actually make progress. There are going to be times when you need a break and you need to distract yourself or perhaps you just need a shoulder to cry and then you go to your companions, right? But when all of those things have started to net level off, you're going to want someone that you can also turn to to expand your vision, to push you to the next level. And that's what the karmic members are. I use the word karmic, and I understand that some people have the definition of karmic being somehow some cosmic payback for something that you've done in the past. So I want you to put that definition to the side. This is not what that means. What I mean by karmic is really more related to growth to your growth. So think about those individuals who ask the tough questions. Think about the individuals who know they have a different perspective on life and in your community and what you're capable of than you do, who really challenge you to open your eyes and change your perspective. And all of them coming from a place of love. So this is the key, finding people who love you enough to make you a better person. And I'm not talking about people who challenge you just because they want to be contrarian or because they want to be critical. These are people, and they're cause, they're, when you're talking about the karmic members, you're talking about people who are constructive. They're there to help you build, expand, grow. We need them. Granted, we might need them in small doses, <laughs> depending on what you're working on. But they're the ones that help us kind of bust out of the comfort zone a little bit. Okay? So you have your legacy members. 
you have your supporters, you have your companions, and you have your karmic members. What do you do with all these people? Okay. Well, the first thing is you want to make sure that you're really intentional about the groups that you have. Now, remember in the beginning, I asked you to think about all those people in your life that you've turned to for support, for guidance, et cetera. Well, perhaps you make a list of all of those people. And the next thing you do is start to label which of these individuals fit into which categories. You might have some people fit in more than one, and that's perfectly fine. But at least it will give you a sense of who you have in your circle currently. And it will also tell you if there are any gaps. Now, if there are some gaps, then you can also think about, well, who would I want to invite into my circle? Or perhaps you know a supporter that's a connector that you can say, hey, connector, <laughs> supporter connector, can you tell me someone that would be great for me to speak to because I need to have a, a vision and someone that I can connect to on my vision? Or I need somebody to just hang out with because I'm really lonely or I'm bored or I need somebody besides my family or besides other friends. Right? Or perhaps they'll tell you who the karmic people are that you can talk to. I need somebody with a new perspective. Yes. Look at the people you currently have in your circle and see where they fit. See where the gaps are. And then you can start being very mindful in who you invite. Okay, that's the first thing you can do. The second thing you can do is also think about those who are already in your circle. What roles are they playing currently? Could they be multi-purposed? Perhaps the person that you've had and you've sought out only for companionship might be a great karmic member. Perhaps engaging them in different conversation might be helpful. But more importantly, the people that you currently have in your circle, it's a wonderful opportunity to appreciate them for something that they provide for you that's so essential. So you might look at your list and go, well, who can I appreciate? Who can I acknowledge for what they provide for me? Perhaps you didn't have language for it, but you can tell someone, oh my goodness, you know, one of the things I so appreciate about you is the fact that anytime I call you, connect me to the right resources and the right person. Which one am I talking about? The supporters, yes, <laughs> good. But think about how to appreciate those that you already have, okay? So one, you can invite, two, you can appreciate. Here's the last piece that I invite you all to take on. A circle is round. It has no beginning and no end. It's cyclical, right? It goes around and around. And for, in order for that to be true, you also have to be reciprocal. So these relationships are not just about you receiving guidance, you receiving support, you receiving companionship, you receiving the growth. It's also about you being able to provide that for others. So I also invite you to think about where could you be an important member of someone else's circle? Do you have a vision that you see, wow, you know, I could really help this person by partnering with them? Do you have contacts, connections, resources that you can provide for another? Perhaps there's a, a, a skill or an activity that you love to do that you know that somebody's been doing on their own or really struggling to get off the ground that you can join them, just participate with them. And perhaps you see a different, bigger, better way to do something that someone that could really use that viewpoint or that expansion benefit from you as a karmic member. So it's an opportunity for you to also contribute. Okay, so now you can invite someone to fill in the gaps. You can appreciate those people that you already have filling some of those roles for you. And then you can also contribute your gifts and your talents, your resources to other people. That's what makes a circle work. That's what makes it so important. In our society, especially in this day and time, we are so challenged sometimes to really expand ourselves. You know, we're right now in 2020, uh, really experiencing this whole thing with coronavirus that's made us have to withdraw from how we interacted normally with people. In some cases, isolate, right? Some more than others, depending on your, 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 your family circle in some cases. But think about how can you be engaged in really growing yourself this year? How do you use this time to really reflect and upgrade the quality of relationships that you have? Looking at your circle and seeing who's, who's there, who's there to support you, who's there to help you, who are you there to contribute to can make all the difference. I want you all to take advantage of this time to do the projects that you've been meaning to do, the, perhaps the things that you've not been 
able to feel comfortable with. Right? This is an opportunity for us to all expand ourselves and our relationships in meaningful ways. I know I went through this quite quickly. So it's likely that you have some questions. It's likely that you want more examples. I actually have a podcast called Time to Come Alive. And if you go to www.timetocomealive.com, you will find the podcast, both video and, as well as audio. And look for the podcast episodes around the circle of influencers. I have five of them. And I break down each of the four categories of people. I talk about the circle in general, and I even do some coaching conversations around some of them. So you listen to those podcast episodes, podcast episodes so you can get a sense of what is there for me to do? How do I want to do it? And perhaps some of your questions may be answered that way. For those of you who know that, wow, this is probably one of the biggest challenges I've had to face is really figuring out what are the relationships that are important to me or how to approach them? What do I say? How do I do it? What works? What doesn't work? And you'd like some more one-on-one -on -one attention? I'm a coach. That's what I do. So I'm absolutely happy to help you one-on-one -on -one and create that. I've been known to fulfill two categories, sometimes at once, <laughs> which is the supporter role. So I love definitely connecting you to the time, to the people, the resources and information that you need to move forward. But I've also been known to play a great karmic member to challenge you to expand and to see different perspectives. So I invite you to reach out to me as well. If you go to www.valeriehope.com, you'll also be able to connect with me directly. And by connecting with me, you'll get a sense of how you can perhaps go deeper and actually start to put together a plan or a strategy for this year that will really take all your relationships to the next level. You want to cycle up or circle up. <laughs> Thank you all so much. It's been a joy and a privilege to spend time with you today.